The holidays can be challenging for people who have experienced the death of a loved one. Regardless of when that loss took place, community hospice and palliative care want to help you navigate those tough times. Marilyn Jones is here with us today. She's a manager of bereavement and community grief department. Welcome to First Coast Living. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me today. Now, this is such a delicate conversation. We were talking over the break just how tough it can be for friends and also family members mm -hmm. as well. So what is hope for holidays? Well, Hope for the Holidays is a workshop that we present every year for the community, and it helps people decide what they might want to do the first year, especially after the death of a loved one. Because, you know, the one thing we know about holidays is regardless of what our religious tradition is or our faith tradition or cultural traditions, one th commonality about holidays is that usually we spend them with family members and very close friends. Right. So when a loved one has died, especially that first holiday season, people are sometimes very much at a loss. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. And their loss is they're acutely aware of who's not going to be with them this holiday season. Right. So some people really struggle with, you know, feeling pressured to get into the holiday season by others and to celebrate when they're not feeling very celebratory at all. So we help people understand that it doesn't have to be an either or. They don't have to crawl into bed and pull the covers over their head and just wait till the holidays pass, nor do they have to do everything just as they've always done it in trying to keep every tradition the same despite the changes they're experiencing. So we help people look at some other options, some ways they may actually still participate in the holidays, but perhaps to change some things and maybe even ways to find ways to remember and mm -hmm. honor their loved one during the holiday season. And we give suggestions for doing that that sometimes actually can make the holidays even more meaningful for people. Right, and we mentioned just how difficult and delicate this type of conversation can be. Why is this resource so important and necessary when it comes to helping those families? It's sort of like the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. and sometimes people really don't know what to say or do. They know that a person is grieving, right. but they really don't know, should I say something, should I not say something? And it is too, true that when people are grieving, they're very sensitive. And some people may be offended if no one mentions their loved one. Others may not want to talk about it. So it's important to find out what's the, what the griever is wanting to do and um, to take the lead from them. You know, if they want to not be reminded and they need some distraction, then, then do that. If they do want to um, talk about their loved one, give them opportunities to do that. Um, but it's never wrong to say, you know, I'm so sorry for your loss. If nothing else, at least offer the condolences. And then you can take your lead from the person. They'll let you know if they want to say right. more about it or yeah. stop. Get that. a little feel for it. Now, you guys have 18 different workshops all we throughout. Do. Northeast Florida this month and next month combined. Yes. What are some of the exercises, some of the things that people can expect when they go to these workshops? One of the things that we talk about is why the holidays are difficult and some of the many things that trigger grief during the holiday season. But then we also give some very practical suggestions for things people can do during the season. And it can be as simple as um, lighting a candle in honor and you know in memory of their loved one it can be perhaps having if they um, decorate a christmas tree perhaps having an ornament on the tree mm -hmm. with their loved one's photograph in it so sometimes they're very simple things like that or and sometimes it's also um, we also help people look at the pressures they're getting during the season and to help them maybe reevaluate what do they want to do this holiday season what are some things maybe they can let go of mm. because that's the thing about tradition sometimes we do things simply because they are tradition right but this gives people a chance to reevaluate their traditions and decide what are they going to still do but what might they do a little differently this year and to find out if there are things that maybe they need some help with this year or do they want to try something different this year so we really take them through some exercises like that there's um, opportunities to exchange ideas with others attending the workshop but there's also um, you know plenty that the presenter is giving them in the way of information to take home with them too. Right. This is such a valuable resource that people just have to have. So how can um, our viewers sign up? It's very easy, and I want to emphasize that there is no fee to attend. All of these are open to anyone, and they're also open to anyone in the community who has had a death. It's not required that their loved one was a patient with community hospice. 
All they need to do, uh, they can call our bereavement line, which is 904-407-7001. They can go to our website, communityhospice.com, and go to the event calendar, and there'll be a ways to register there as well, give them all the information they need. Thank you so much, Marilyn. We'd like to thank Community Hospice and Palliative Care for sponsoring this segment. You can learn more by visiting communityhospice.com or by calling 904-407-7001.